That's recording, so whenever you're ready, you can start. Hi, I'm Michelle Barker, and I'm circuit writer for Preservation Massachusetts and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And I'm here to talk a little bit about the National Register of Historic Places and other types of historic districts and how that might affect Laurel Park. The National Register of Historic Places is the official national list of significant properties and is maintained by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts through the Mass Historical Commission and the National Park Service. Other types of historic designation are um, local historic districts and the state historic register. And I'll talk about those a little bit more later, but I'll start with the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, properties are listed on the National Register because they have an important story to tell about a place uh, and about the past. In the case of Laurel Park, the park's wonderful history as part of the Methodist camp movement and the Chautauqua movement in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It's just a great story. And also how that place transitioned from a summer place to year-round residences. And the, the wonderful atmosphere that still remains here of this community, which I've you know, found really, really compelling on my visits here. Getting listed on the National Register of Historic Places involves researching an area and writing a fairly lengthy report that is submitted to the State Historical Commission, who then in turn will review it and submit it to the National Park Service. And if it's approved, a historic district will be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And there are some benefits to that listing. The number of potential benefits um, includes the potential of tax credits for income producing properties. There is a 20% federal tax credit and a 20% state tax credit for rehabilitation work that's done on historic properties. There is a certain amount of regulatory protection against work that is done with state or federal funding or that involves state or federal permits. So for example, if work is done on Route 5 or on Route 91, that could potentially have an adverse impact on Laurel Park, then the State Historical Commission would be involved in a review process that could mitigate the effects of that work on the park. So that's a real important consideration. There's also the possibility of not-for-profit entities being eligible for grants by being listed on the National Historic Register um, that they might not otherwise be eligible for. For example, the state of Massachusetts has the Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund, which is a grant program that can be used to rehabilitate historic buildings, but only if they're on the National Register. There are also intangible benefits um, of community pride, um, telling the story of your a specific district to the community and making people aware of how important this place is. There are a lot of misunderstandings about what being on the National Register of Historic Districts means, oh, I'm sorry, the National Register of Historic Places means, and I'll address a few of those. Some people think that buildings have to be in museum quality condition, perfectly preserved just as they were the day they were built. Now, that's not true. Buildings can have alterations. They can be in not perfect condition and still be listed on the register. Each and every building in a historic district does not have to be in perfect condition. Um, properties on the register do not have to be 100 or 200 years old. The cutoff is generally 50 years or more, but there are some exceptions and, and properties even newer than 50 years old, if they're of exceptional significance, can be listed. The National Register does not require you to open your property to the public. Sometimes people think, I'm going to have to have my home open one day a month or one day a year. That's not true. Um, no effect on your ability to keep your private property private. It does not allow the regulation of private property so that um, if you think that being on the National Register is going to mean that somebody's going to say you can't paint your house a certain color, you can't change the windows, you can't enclose your porch, um, you can't make certain changes, that's not the case. If you are doing work with your own money on private property, you can do whatever you wish. There is no regulation in, in those terms. The only regulation comes into effect if there are state or federal funds involved. So if there's a state grant program or a federal grant program, state loan or federal loan program that affects you, in that case there may be um, a review process that's involved and that is something that would be done at the level of the um, organization that is managing that program so you have to, to talk to them to see what kinds of reviews would be involved. Um, the other types of historic dis designations um, include local historic districts um, and a local historic district is different from a national historic district 
because with a local historic district, there is actually a local ordinance that has to be passed to create that district. So with a National Register nomination, there is no ordinance, there is no local regulation. With a local historic district, there is a local ordinance that is passed. And that is something that is usually initiated by the people who are living in a district and who want to have some control over the changes that happen to that, that district. Um, and an ordinance can regulate anything from demolition to changes in the building, and they vary from community to community. Um, they can be um, fairly general or fairly specific. Um, so, so there are quite a lot of differences. But um, that is something that would be decided on a local level, and, and you as a community would have to decide if that would be something you wanted to pursue or not. Um, but as far as the National Register um, goes, being a National Register District is not going to involve any real regulation within, the, um, within Laurel Park. Something you might want to think about if you are concerned about changes to the park, rather than looking at a, a, a citywide ordinance or bylaw that deals with Laurel Park as a historic district, is to think about the, the internal bylaws or possible guidelines within the park that might be something that you can use to, uh, to address changes that you would like to see or that you might not like to see within the park. Um, and I think that might be perhaps a, a good approach in this case. And so um, I guess to wrap up, um, just to reinforce the, the differences among those, being on the National Register has some advantages in terms of tax credits, in terms of potential grant funding, um, and in terms of some protection from actions that are done by the state and the federal government. Um, it does not stop you from doing what you want with your property with your own funds. If there is a local historic district ordinance, then yes, that can affect what you do with your property. And that is something that you can choose to pursue or, or not choose to pursue. And, and that is probably a discussion that you'll have to have within the community about where you want to go with, that, with those processes. Does that Thank make sense? You. Great. I hope, Thank it's, you. I hope it's coherent. Yeah. <laughs>